Hey, welcome to day 174 of our Bible reading plan. Today, we are reading 1 Kings 12 to 14. So let's get to it. In 1 Kings 12, we have uh, Israel rebelling against Rehoboam. Solomon's dead, and now Rehoboam comes and decides that he's going to be a punk. He first asks the elders who served with his dad, hey, what do you guys think I should do? Everyone says that my dad had a pretty hard way for everybody. He put them through a lot. They had to work pretty hard for him. And they're like, you know, if you go easy on them and listen to them and lighten the load a little bit, they're going to love you and they'll be yours forever. And he's like, I don't know about that. And so he asks his young guys that he grew up with, what do you think I should do? And they say, you know what? You should go crazy. You should tell them, oh, you think my dad was tough? I'm way tougher. You think my pinky is as tough as his, as thick as his waist, which is probably a euphemism for something else. They say, tell everybody that, you know, he had, he drove you with whips. I'm going to use scorpions, like just ridiculous. Like I'm going to be over the top. It's like an uh, WWF pro wrestling, like, can you smell what Ray Boam is cooking? Kind of a response. And Israel goes, all right, fine we're out and we're not going to have anything to do with you. And so they bail and the 10 tribes leave Judah and that's their excuse. And so they go with Jeroboam. Then Jeroboam says, I'll, I'll hook you guys up because you can't uh, worship in Jerusalem. So he sets up golden calves at Bethel and Dan and he starts offering sacrifices to them. And he says, guys, look, this is, these are your gods that brought you up out of Egypt. And immediately Yahweh is like, absolutely not. This is 100% violating the covenant I have with my people. This is ridiculous. Don't you remember what happened with Aaron? Come on. So he sends a man of God to go and tell Jeroboam, like, this does not play. This is not cool. And I will not be having it this way. And it's crazy that the reason why the kingdom was torn apart in the first place is because Solomon joined in idolatry with his wives. And now we have Rehoboam, who decides to be a punk and ends up not following the Lord. And we have Jeroboam who decides to be a punk and start offering sacrifices to golden calves. Anyway, he sends a man of God to come and prophesy against it. The prophecy, the initial one comes true where he says, you know, you're going to end up having human sacrifice and the priests who offer sacrifices here will be sacrificed on it. And it's going to, the sign that it's all going to come true is that the the altar will split and all the ashes will fall everywhere. And so that's exactly what happens. And then the man of God leaves and Jeroboam tries to like win him over. And he's like, oh, just come eat with me. It'll be okay. And he's like, nope, the Lord told me not to drink water or eat bread while I'm here. So I got to go and not even to go home the same way. And so he takes off. And then a prophet, an older prophet, hears about this guy coming from his sons. And so then he goes, hey, saddle up my donkey. And he goes and catches him and he lies to him. And he says, hey, actually, God said you can come with me and eat bread and, wa and drink water. And so he's like, oh, okay. And so he goes with him. False prophet lying. And how, what was the check? Did it violate the word that God had already given? And it did. It went against that. And so he's led astray. He ends up being killed. The guy is filled with the spirit of the Lord and actually prophesies properly and tells him, hey, because of what you did, you went against what the Lord said. Now you're going to die. And he gets on his donkey and he goes to leave and a lion jumps out and kills him. And then the lion and the donkey stand there, not tearing him up so that everyone who sees it knows that it is something crazy, a sign from the Lord. And then the prophet comes back out and collects the body and buries him because it and he says, we'll give him a proper burial and even bury me with him because I know his prophecy about that altar is going to come true. And of course it will. Abijah, the same prophet that we've encountered a couple of times now, he comes and prophesies against uh, or gets a visit from Jeroboam's wife. And they try to do some deceit. He doesn't fall for it because he's a prophet. And then he says, here's what's going to happen. Your son's going to die and the kingdom's going to be ripped from Jeroboam because of all the evil you're doing. And Jeroboam won't turn from his evil ways. And so he ends up dying and somebody else is going to become king, not his son. And then Rehoboam, we pick up his thing at the end of 14. We get a little, the end of his story. It says he was king in Judah. He was 41 years old and his mother was an Ammonite named Naamah and Judah under Rehoboam's reign, did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And by the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than those who, who were before them had done. And so they set up high places. They set up Asherah poles. So both kingdoms 
who, that were formed into two different kingdoms and split because of their idolatry now still find themselves both getting deeper into idolatry, worshiping false gods, instead of turning back toward Yahweh. This is how the first two kings after Solomon work out. And man, what stands out to me, like what God said once is going to be true always. Follow the Lord, stay true to him. And when he says not to do something, it turns out he means it. I'd love to hear what stands out to you. So uh, read through this and comment on this video or in the Bible app with us. I can't wait to hear all of your comments and questions from this. So let's get talking to it. Keep praying, keep reading, be rad for Jesus.